Chrissy Ferrier was 22. A nanny caring for the six-year-old daughter of family friends. She'd finally saved enough money for a trip to China. In fact, she should have left the week before. But the girl she cared for wanted Chrissy to stay for her seventh birthday. They'd gone downtown that day to shop for a party dress. Rita Coronado worked as a cleaning lady at the River Cross Plaza. She was usually late for work, but she had a good reason. Since her son Marco was nine years old, she had to personally drop him at school to make sure he actually went. But her dedication had paid off. Marco was now an honor student. As a reward for all his hard work, Rita was taking him to his first baseball game. And she was on her way to pick up the tickets that very afternoon. Nancy Holt's last words to her husband were lie. She told him she was taking her car to be serviced, but in fact, she was headed downtown. She told the clerk she didn't want the purchase showing up on her credit card. She wanted to surprise her husband for their 10th anniversary, just a few days away. Ola and Archie never liked her husband's construction business even after helping him become one of the largest contractors in the county. So it came as a relief when his failing health and a costly lawsuit were forcing them to sell to the competition. Her husband had given his life for the company. But now that it was hers, she couldn't bring herself to let it go. She was on her way to secure a loan that day, so she could keep the business she'd always hated. Darren Sawyer was an investment broker in the same building where Rita worked. His wife said he'd grown increasingly distant and late. She can't remember their last words to one another, but they weren't kind. Darren's body was found beside a fresh bouquet of roses he bought that morning, and his wife takes comfort in the fact that in his last moments, he was most likely thinking of her. Innocent people, senselessly murdered. I'm sorry, could you please? Five innocent people. Murdered at random, yes. <sighs> you know how many people die in this country every year? What else would you call it? Or take Darren and Nancy. Odds are they were having an affair. Excuse me? You don't buy roses for your wife on the way to work, you buy them on the way home. And you don't worry about a charge showing up in your credit card when your anniversary is that weekend, unless it's the gift you're hiding. That's why she kept walking. While everyone else ran. You can't phone emails. All it takes is someone willing to dig. What's your point exactly? My point is that two of the victims weren't there strictly by chance. A conspiracy to kill five random people? Ridiculous. Four. Four random people to hide one specific target. Someone needed Oline Archer's construction business. And Oline wouldn't let it go. The first round is at least accurate. The snipers call it a cold shot. Meanwhile, your eyewitness described a pause between the first and second rounds. The one shot where the killer took his time. An old line archer was the second victim. The one shot that mattered. But it's just a theory. And this frame was custom made for Barr. Whoever chose him knew about Baghdad, and the only one who could have told him about Baghdad was Barr himself. He has at least one friend. A very close one. 